this is a reply to Thou Art That, um, and to, really to a video he attached, that he uploaded a lot years ago, uh, of Alan Watts. I forget the title, I'll put the link down below. And I'm going to make another video that's going to clarify what I'm talking about, about why I don't use a metaphysical framing in any way and why that's necessary and, and the history that draws us to make that decision one way or another right okay but this video thou art that I really have enjoyed our conversations over the years you were literally the first philosophy blogger I saw um, and you know I respect your thinking but yeah, I, I, I'm i going to not be particularly kind to Alan Watts, okay, he bugs me. Now in this video he's talking about the unexamined assumptions, which he then goes to examine, so we can examine them, they just happen to be unexamined. He emphasizes, I think, just through implication, a lot of the unexamined as if it's meant to be unexamined. But obviously he believes in examining them, because that's what he then does. Now he makes it some good linguistic points, interesting points about, like, is the mountain made of rock? No, it is rock. There isn't a, a thing, the mountain, that is made of, and it's some other thing. And thinking that there is, that's what generated Plato's world of forms, right? The leaf is on that tree the leaf being some other entity that happens to be on that tree whereas what we call the leaf is this phenomena inherently on the tree you know he says that flashing the lightning is an example of that but no of course no flashing is different from the lightning but that's differently you see materially we can start to tell some of these differences but even so all the phenomena caused by something are, are similarly united with what quote unquote caused them. Um, meaning if you bring time into it, everything, you know, is itself altogether. And there's since everything's connected, there's this uh, interesting uh, image of, of self can be visualized. Now he talks about these and how we're misled, how we adopt a dualism from language, but of course it goes both ways. We've stored our ideas of dualism in language, but it does work both ways. So, you know, he's got this interesting idea about the hidden assumptions, all sounds quite nice, but I think he still also has a misunderstanding of language because it's close as it's, it's all the more obvious because he sees the sort of work that language does helping us think sort of secretly with what we call framing in cognitive science right um it's so close but he just misses a huge part because he doesn't believe in the embodied mind he's more like the idealized body you know the whole idea that the idea like the flashing of the lightning or the rock and the mountain uh, being the same thing um, you know an idea is the chemical process and electrical process that's making it happen you know or people like to think the, the idea is not the words written on the paper yeah it is but there's so many copies of it yeah and they're all physical <laughs> all of the cop copies or physics needs if every physical copy was destroyed it'd be gone it's like, just because you can duplicate it doesn't make an idea non-physical. But it's in between. I have a bucket of water here, a bucket of water here, therefore the idea of a bucket of water is in between. Well, yeah, if you're standing in between it because the idea is in your head. And that idea isn't even the same as a bucket of water, and that confuses people. But what bugs me is that, you know, he... Well, okay, for example, he, he says you can't touch the tip of your finger with the tip 
uh, with you can't touch the tip of this finger with the tip of this finger. Uh, I can touch it with this other tip, though. You can have a relationship with yourself. Yeah, you need two things to have a relationship. Um, well, I'm trillions of things, so I got that covered over time. Very straightforward. You know, he's like, you can't get a look at your face like turning around and trying to face see yourself like that Jimi Hendrix line yes you can't but you can use a mirror you know he, he's emphasizing the mystery and, and as if we should try the mentally deficient type experiments like how long would you try turning around really quick how, how long did that take him to figure that out till he just gave up and decided not to mention mirrors you, you can't investigate yourself and see I think what his problem is is that he says there's always a mystery yeah and that's just wonderful and it's put it with beautiful visuals and sounds it's always a mystery but you see there's an ancient argument really about mystery it's like a lot of people just love mystery it scares other people but I'm one of the people that loves it and they just love mystery and, and there's defenders of mystery defenders of mystery reminds me of what Nietzsche said of the truth you know the truth is not as distressed as you think it doesn't need your defense admit you're trying to use the truth to defend yourself but anyway, um, back on mystery, you know, these defenders of mystery, they, they're like, they want to keep things mystery, because mystery is wonderful. But the realization that no matter what you do, there will always be a mystery, no matter how much you break down matter, even if you find the smallest piece of mass, it breaks into energy, even if you find the smallest piece of energy, it breaks down into fields and time and and I believe, like Alan Watts, that you're, you're always going to do that every time you break these things down, or if you look bigger and bigger, you're always going to have mystery. And you can't even say that you're shrinking the mystery, because in a way the mystery gets bigger. It's arguable there's always more and more questions. But you do increase the sphere of concrete knowledge, right? Like that's how we're getting technology better and better, and you zero in on, on a broader, you broaden something, you enlighten areas, even if it just shows there's a huge, always are large, unknown, darker area with, that has, on upon which light has not been shed yet. What that means is that you don't have to defend mystery. The lovers of mystery don't have to defend mystery. The lovers of mystery can be those that shine light on it and go explore it yeah and they make it mundane and it's not mystery anymore oh so sad no because it's it's a pretty lazy lover of mystery that's like well I, I just want to stick with this mystery it's great and it's like no there's an explanation no hey stop you're you're ruining it what are you trying to knock me out of the garden you in here don't tell me that I love mystery and I'm, it's like well no I'll explain this one believe me there's five more mysteries it raises it's like yeah right I'm not listening to you anymore that's the kind of feeling it is I, I I'm offended really by the anti this, this is all a rhetoric I'd like this explained or that he has this rhetoric of exploration and wonder but he's really saying let the mystery be mystery type emphasis and why and what does that have to do with metaphysics okay cheers